and the berries of Channa, they will be on trees on which there will be no thorns so that it will be easy for all the inmates of Janna to get them and to reach them. Now verse number 26. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna allaha la yastahiyin yadraba mathala ma ba'awzatam fama falqaha fa'amma lazina amanu fa'ya'namuna annahu al-haqqu mir rabbihim wa'amma lazina qafaru fa'yakuluna maza aradallahu bihadha mathala yudhillu bihi qafiran wa yahdi bihi qafiwa wa ma yudhillu bihi illa al-fasiqeen. Indeed, Allah is not timid or shy to present an example that of a mosquito or what is smaller than that and those who have believed know that it is what that these examples of Allah's creation like mosquito or, or what is even smaller than that that it is the truth from the Lord but as for those who disbelieve they say what did Allah intend by this as an example he misleads many thereby, and he guides many thereby, and he misleads not except the defiantly disobedient. The disobedience has been called as what? al -fasiqi. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about or mentioning the name of one of his creations, the mosquito. Ba'uzatan, fama falqaha, or something which is above it. Ba'uzatan means a mosquito, and what is something which is about above it? Fama falqaha. It is explained by the narrators of Quran that it refers to a very small or a tiny virus or a tiny microorganism which is not even visible by the naked eye which just resides or it stays as a parasite above the head of the of the mosquito so that is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that one of the tiniest creation which is visible by the naked eye, that is a mosquito, or even a tiny creation which is not even visible by the tiny, with the naked eye, or is just visible by a microscope. Allah does not even feel timid or shy in explaining or talking or mentioning about that. The verse is a scientific verse. And people of those periods, they could not relate or understand what fama falqaha means. Today, when science explains us that there are microorganisms which live as a parasite or as a symbiotic form with the mosquitoes, we relate how scientific Quran is and how slowly and steadily with the advancement of science and scientific knowledge and with the different fields of knowledge, the Quran and the messages and verses of Quran go unraveling. Now, the verse explains what? You know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about his creation. And not only has talked about his creation, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has named many of his surahs and chapters of Quran with the names of his creation. Small creations. For example, in Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Surah of Quran, which is the peak of Quran, which is Sanamul Quran, which is the hump of Quran. The name is derived from what? The cow. Surah Namul gets its name. And Allah has also mentioned about the ant, the Namul. Surah al ankabut Allah names the Surah and also mentions the, the Surah, the spider, al ankabut Then Surah Nahal. Allah names the surah and then Allah talks about the honeybee. Inshallah, in our discussion of all these uh, chapters of Quran, we shall be talking about these miracle creations of Allah. But today, I think I would need to explain a few things about the mosquito itself. You know what the disbelievers used to criticize when Allah used to talk about the ant or talk about the honeybee or talk about the mosquito, the disbelievers. The purpose of whose relation with Quran was just to criticize. These were the people who were just stubborn and obstinate and the purpose of their life was just to oppose. 
The disbelievers used to criticize and na'uzubillah, they used to make fun of them. And they used to say that, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about such, such small creation? So that is why Allah has explained this here in this verse. Now, the verse shows what? The first message we get from here is that for the creator, all his creations are important and special. May it be big, may it be small, may it be strong, may it be weak. All the creations are important for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his sight and in the sight of the creation. So never, never, ever do we need to be proud or arrogant. Allah likes all his creations. And then I've already explained what fama fawqaha means. If he mentions a small germ, if he mentions a small virus or microorganism, then never ever do we need to be arrogant in front of his creations or his beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all stay in a state of humbleness and help us take out any forms of arrogance if there is in our hearts. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all his creations and speaks about all, all of his creations. A mosquito is what? A mosquito is a remarkable miniature creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will say that a mosquito is a remarkable piece of miniature art of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is no doubt a mini, a mini helicopter. Now talking about some of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, remarkably created in, in the mosquito, the wings of the mosquito. The wings of the mosquito, they are thin. They are extremely thin. They are even thinner and more transparent than the finest of tissue papers. But yet they are extremely powerful. These extremely thin wings, they vibrate with such an immense frequency and velocity and the speed that this, this vibration, this is what creates the buzzing sound of the mosquito when it, it hovers around our, our ears and our, our cells. And the speed of the wings is why? Because these thin wings, they have been provided with an intricate network of blood vessels supplying them. Wings, the muscles, the joints of the wings, all forms of energy. SubhanAllah. In these paper thin wings, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create a network of those fine tubes of blood vessels? And how does blood run in all those blood vessels giving energy and power to all the muscles and then Allah in those fine wings created muscles and joints and blood vessels and blood subhanallah subhanallah and then you know the legs they are thinner even than the finest threads of silk but they act as one of the most powerful landing landing pads of a helicopter the helicopter lands on the helipad and similarly does the mosquito land wherever it has to land. These are the powerful, finest, finer than even the thread of a silk. And being, and being so powerful, they have joints, they have bones, they have muscles. Subhanallah, Allah, Akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And then in flight, you know the helicopter just moves forward. But the tiny, this miniature helicopter, the mosquito, it moves forwards, it moves backwards, it moves upwards, it moves downwards, it moves in all forms. And then the eyes of the mosquito, we, the superior beings, we who tend to be so arrogant, we have two eyes. And the mosquito, some species of mosquitoes have been, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with 100 pairs of eyes and some with 50 pairs of eyes and things like that. And then the diet of the mosquito. What is the diet of the mosquito? Is the blood. 
it sucks blood. And that is what it feeds on. But how does he get the blood? Allah, the Razik, the Razak, has so graciously provided the mosquito with all the resources to be able to suck the blood it needs for its survival. It lands on the human skin. How does it land? Why does it land there? How does it penetrate and puncture the skin? And how does it suck? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, give, has given the mosquito everything. You know what? To cut the human skin, this tiny little creature, this tiny little creature, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided with four to eight very strong canine teeth. We have two pairs of canine teeth, two canines on the upper jaw and two canines on the lower jaw. But the mosquito has been given with two, depending upon the different species, has been given two, four to eight pairs of canine teeth, which are like saws. They are like very sharp saws and they have very, very sharp cutting edges. And in addition to these canine teeth acting as saws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided the mosquito with very powerful jaws, which are going to move these saws as cutters. So this makes the tiny creature, it makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, makes it very easy to puncture the human skin. Now, another thing, when the skin, we know that when the skin, human skin is cut or it is abraded, then the blood flows from it. But very soon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the blood an intrinsic inbuilt mechanism that the blood clot, clots and then obviously it puts a plug at the point where it, there was a cut and the blood stops flowing. That is a protective mechanism for the human body. Now, what happens here? Imagine if the mosquito made a tiny puncture and the human blood clotted and closed off the puncture. What would have happened? Obviously, the mosquito would have been deprived. But Allah is the creator. Allah is the creator of the man and the human body. And Allah is the creator and the sustainer, both of the human being and the mosquito. So what has Allah done? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the mosquito, has created in the mouth or the buccal cavity of the mosquito, tiny glands. These tiny glands produce what? These tiny glands produce secretions or a fluid which has anti-clotting properties. Now the ducts of these glands, they pass on from the buccal cavity to the canine teeth, which are going to act as the sores and the cutters. And you know what happens when the teeth or the canine teeth or the sores are cutting or puncturing the human skin. At the same time, the ducts of the glands are pouring the anti-clotting fluid in the blood, which stops the blood from clotting and the blood does not clot as long as the teeth remain there and the secretions are poured in and the mosquito sucks as much blood as he wants. It wants for its, to fill up its stomach. And then in addition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in addition to the ducts of these glands, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also made and adjusted ducts of the suckers the tiny suckers which are going to operate to suck blood. How intricate and how delicate and how small this mosquito and then how tiny the buccal cavity and there you have a gland and there you have suckers and there you have ducts of both attached to the canines, one sucking out, one pouring in. What are we? What do we are, need to say? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. This is Allah. This is Allah. The Rabbul Alameen, the Razik for all. And then you know another remarkable feature. 
how, how does the mosquito get exactly where the bloodstream is? Because you know, when we are getting an intravenous injection or when we are getting a blood test, you know, there are many times the technician misses our vessels. The, te the technician just cannot get in the needle in our, in our vein. Now, how does the mosquito puncture the skin and directly get into the blood vessel? It could have made a puncture on the skin beneath which there is no blood vessel and missed, this, missed the head. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided the mosquito with highly sensitive, extremely sensitive thermal sensors, temperature sensors on the undersurface of the body of the mosquito. Because when it hovers over the surface of our body or, or our skin, these sensors will sense the part of the skin under which there is a blood vessel. Because science today tells us that the temperature of the skin beneath which there is no blood vessel is comparatively micro micro degrees of centigrade lower than the temperature of the skin which is over a blood vessel. So the extremely sensitive thermal sensors of the mosquitoes bodies under surface they detect the slightly higher temperature of the skin flowing under which the blood is flowing in the blood vessels. So that is exactly where the mosquito lands. And when it punctures the skin, it is successful in puncturing the skin beneath which there is a blood vessel and that is punctured. So this is Allah. He is just one. He is perfect. He is the best physicist. He is the best biologist. He is knowing of all. And there is, he is subhan. He is perfect. So now remember that he is Rasik. He has arranged and provided for the risk of this tiny creature. He will, he will surely arrange for and provide for our and our offspring's sustenance also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawakkul, bless us with reliance, and let, let all of us refrain from unlawful earnings.